strive to become one. This is the Rock Newman Show, 1480 AM on your radio dial. Telephone number 202-889-9797. Tell your friends to tune us in around the world at www.rocknewmanshow.com. Minister Farrakhan, in our first segment, in in the first hour today, I had a gentleman on who, for years, I've watched uh, on various news shows and have applauded what I've heard him talk about. Um, and I certainly shared that with him today. His name was Mark Potok, and he's with the Southern Poverty Law Center. And when I've seen him on CNN, MSNBC, CBS, ABC, whatever it might be, he typically has, been, uh, has, has talked about extremism, He's talked about racial hatred. He's talked about groups that are are violent. I did a little study to see how their work has crushed uh, groups like the White uh, Citizens Council, the Ku Klux Klan. And as I did my research, it was an absolute shock to me. I, I frankly, being somewhat familiar with you and the Nation of Islam, and basically just seeing your work and the, and the nation's work, you know, since my days at Howard University in the 1970s, I was absolutely shocked to find out that the Southern Poverty Law Center had listed the Nation of Islam as a hate group. So I had a discussion with uh, Mark Potok, and he agreed to come on this morning. I, I invited Mark to come on while you were on and his timing uh, whatever it was he uh could only he, he could only join us in the nine o'clock hour and so i talked to him about some of the work that they've done the threats that they uh live under you know we were made aware of people trying to bomb their buildings they say they spent over a, a million dollars a year in security uh for people that uh constantly live on the constant threat and i asked him whether or not, um, I, I talked to him and asked him whether or not he was aware <clears throat> of the work that the nation does and sort of the deeds that I think are universally uh, acknowledged that are, are good deeds by the nation. And he said, yes, indeed, he was, um, he was aware of that. But yes, that the Southern Poverty Law Center lists the nation of Islam as a hate group because of what he characterized as the doctrine, and that the doctrine is one that speaks that the white race is an inferior race, and that that, those teachings continue today. Because I asked him, I said, I haven't been in a church or a synagogue or a mosque in quite some time, so I can't tell you what the teachings of any of the three are, for the most part, but are you aware? So he said, yeah, and I've talked to several uh, of their followers, and they don't know the teachings. They don't know those racist teachings exist. I challenged that a bit to say I, that sound a little paternalistic, that, that the Nation of Islam followers wouldn't understand the teachings of the Nation of Islam. My question to you, and I guess what I'd like for you to do, is being on a hate list of a group like this, that's a fairly damning label. And the, I, and, the, and the support and voice that he gave to why, because the nation in the past and still teaches that the white race is an inferior race and the black race is a superior race, um, I'd like for you to respond to those uh, those claims. Thank you, um, Rock. To Mr. Botok and to the uh, Poverty Law Center and to white and black people alike. First, hate is always manifested not just with words, but with deeds. 
And if he and they, out of their hatred for us, have made books that they put in schools saying that the nation of Islam is a hate group. They have made films and they put it before police departments that we are a hate group. They are the purveyors of hate against the nation of Islam. Now, if they've spent a million dollars a year on security, and yet all of this that they've done to us, yet they can't find one hateful act that any one of us has done to any one of them. So what is it about our doctrine that causes them to classify us as a hate group. Let me tell you simply what it is. Now, they say that we teach that white is inferior and black is superior. I don't know in what context you are speaking because we as black people are in a very inferior position, not only in America, but in the Caribbean, in Central and South America, and in Africa. We once were in a superior position. But since two things can't occupy the same space at the same time, they are the ruling people of this time. So that's a lie or a misstatement of fact. But here's what we teach. And white folk teach it too. Uh, let's see. The Honorable Elijah <coughs> Muhammad said, two white people cannot produce yellow, much less brown or black. But the black man in us and from us came every species of human being that is on our planet. That is not hate or racism. That is an absolute fact. Now, some white anthropologists, one of the main ones was Dr. Leakey. He was looking for the origin of man. And he didn't, he may have passed through Europe, but he didn't stay there. He went to Africa. And he found the bones of a man 750,000 years of age, and they called him Zinj Anthropus. Zinj meaning black, Anthropus meaning man, and Zinj Anthropus had a father. So they kept on searching, and they found bones of black people a million and a half, two million, three million years. We are considered in the Bible the ancient of days. You cannot find our origin in the earth or in the sun. You find it with God. Now, having said that, does that mean we are superior? In the genetic sense, absolutely. If you keep bothering us, black folk shoot not AK-47s. They shoot something <laughs> that if we mix with you, you are gone. We stay. So genetically, you are inferior. That's not your mentality. That's not your creativity. That's your genetic makeup. We can wipe you off the earth just cohabiting with you. And that's why your population is going down. Now, w we didn't do that. You're the one that's promoting intermarriage now. Yes, there was a time when you would kill a black man for looking under a white woman's dress that was hanging on a clothesline. Now, that's hate. We don't do that. 
we are telling the truth you came from us you are the adam of the bible and we are the us that made man in our image and after our likeness and we are the us that gave you time on our planet for you to live your life for 6000 years and we would not interfere with your rule until the coming of god god is present now and the truth is present now so we are your alpha and we are your omega we you began from us and you will end with us that's real that's not hey that's your scripture now let's go to real no no i got to finish this rob oh, i'm i'm just getting warmed up here now here's hey I'm hearing myself so, coming so back. So so am I. So whatever is going on in the engineering, uh I'm yeah. hearing a reverb. Yeah, don't get excited <laughs> and try to mess it up. <laughs> yeah, there is a repeat. Uh we're having a technical issue. No, it it's not technical, it's spiritual. You know. <laughs> and now we don't. Okay. Uh, thank you. Right. I I I understand. Believe me, see, once you open Pandora's box, you can't take what's coming out of it see but you opened it now isn't it true that in the talmudic the babylonian talmud this is jewish literature that it was a jewish rabbi that introduced the thought that black people are the children of ham and are doomed as scriptures say to be hewers of wood and drawers of water that we are not black uh, out of uh, this creation of god we are cursed black wrong but you put that out is that love or is that hate how many uh, muslims have segregated you you down in alabama mr potok and in alabama who was it that put up white and black drinking fountains who put up white and black uh hotel motel see you are the author of that and that speaks to your hatred of us we didn't do that to you you all did that to us right now in the movie there's a history of the great ball player Jackie Robinson. Jackie Robinson. Look at what that man had to suffer to bring and open the door to black and brown and yellow to become a part of baseball. There was no black, there was no brown, there was no Japanese in baseball. So Jackie Robinson and black people opened the door for the rest of those who now are in baseball look man this is not our doing on your people this is your doings on our people so will the real hater stand up and by the way i want to say this since you charged us with being a hate group I think we ought to bring you into your courts and make you prove what you assert about us with fact not with innuendo not with the wicked way you have been spreading your vile talk about us we can prove what we say about you but you cannot prove what you're saying about us maybe we'll iron this out before your courts we don't get justice but the truth will come out Let me let me ask on that point. On on that particular man there's there's you, there's so much to ask. Yeah, we'll ask it all. Yeah, let me but let, let, let me ask this. Don't hold nothing. So back. so the Southern Poverty Law Center, uh, I repeat, has a nation of Islam listed as a hate group. Now, it would seem to me here's what I'd like to do. As someone who arranged boxing matches, someone who arranged fights, and someone who is making an earnest effort to try to heal the wounds of all 
if Mr. Potok is still watching, I hope you are, and if not, we'll certainly, you know, reach out. I would ask Mr. Potok and maybe his people, if they, if you, I would ask him if he would be interested in having an open dialogue to don't, either don't, agree yes. or to yeah. vi or vehemently disagree. Let Is me, that something that me, you would be interested yeah, yeah, in? Yeah, of course. Let me help you with that. <laughs> See, look, don't bring Potok alone. Bring the ADL. Mr. Foxman, bring the presidents of the 12 Jewish organizations, sit down in front of the world with us and our scholars, and we'll debate you, and I know you won't win. That's why you don't want to come on no show with me. I don't, let me, let me, let me say this. I don't argue. I make a statement of fact you can deal with it, or leave it alone. But if you want a showdown, I'll call for it. You respond. Bring Mr. Foxman. Bring the 12 scholars of the Jewish presidents. Bring those who say we are anti-Semitic and arrange a national and international showdown. And let's see where the truth is. Yeah, we can be one, but all liars and deceivers got to be shown up and put down. And he's one of them. And when you say he's one of them, you're speaking of? He, Potok. He, Abraham Foxman. He, the ADL. All of those that are condemning the nation. Come on out and let's have a showdown. You know... I want to say this, that when people have a difference of opinion, whether it is a presidential election, whether it is election for mayor or for dog catcher, this we live in supposedly a democratic society. And there are debates to be had to determine and let people decide for themselves. Now, I know that there is a body of thought that says that you don't talk with an extremist, you don't talk with a terrorist. But if any example in our government is to be taken, we talk to China. We talk to North Korea. You know, converging sides with, I mean, with very different and hostile sentiments try to talk. Menachem Begin and Anwar Sadat, each side calling the other a terrorist. At least they try to talk. And for me, and I don't want to sound Pollyannish or naive, I would ask the simple question. Let's have a coming together to deal with the questions that have been posed. Not the questions, I'm sorry, the accusations. The accusation, Mark, that you make that you feel rooted and comfortable in your belief, Mark, that the Nation of Islam should be continued to be listed as a hate group. And the minister is obviously, the vehemently disagrees. Now, you have your reasons, Mark, and obviously the minister has his. And what I would like to invite both of you to do at some point, and as you say, if, if, if Mr. Foxman from the ADL and the other people that you talked about, why wouldn't we have that kind of open, transparent dialogue to try at the end of the day to reason with each other? That is something certainly that I will attempt to advocate from this little desk where I sit, and we'll see what happens. Now, let me, let me just say this, uh, uh, brother. You can't find one act that the Nation of Islam and Louis Farrakhan has done against Jews or whites. There are hate crimes in America, and they're all 
dial uh, cataloged, not one has been named on the nation of Islam and followers of Louis Farrakhan and the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. If we are haters, why can't you show me some hateful act that we have done other than our telling the truth that exposes your lies and your deceit. So let's have the showdown. I love the term showdown. And since you are a promoter <laughs> of a fight, <laughs> this is a fight that needs to be had. Make the fight happen. Otherwise, you'll always follow me up. If I come on the show, you'll come behind me. Oh, he's a hater. He's this. No, let's come out in the light. You know how cockroaches are when the light comes on. You know how rats are when the light comes on. They run for cover. Well, we're not running nowhere. We look for this kind of dialogue. We've tried for almost 30 years to have a dialogue, a meaningful dialogue. We've had dialogues, all right, but it ends up with them telling me I got to apologize for telling the truth. You can't get no apology from me for telling truth. Now, I will prove my truth. Let them come. And let us go to the phones. We have, we have callers lined up. Caller, you're on the line. You're on the Rock Newman Show. Our guest is in studio is Minister Louis Farrakhan. That's the queen, Aretha Franklin, on the Rock Newman Show at WEAC Radio, 1480 AM. I'm going to give this number out one last time. We've got some callers on hold, 202-889-9797. We've got a lot of stuff going on here. You can tweet us at hashtag Rock Newman. Or you can go to the Rock Newman fan page, or you can go to Rock Newman on Facebook. Um, let me say, I would be remiss if I didn't announce this, that Minister Farrakhan will be speaking tomorrow, April the 28th, just up the street at Union Temple Baptist Church, located at 1225 W Street, Southeast Washington. And that will be the 40th anniversary, I think of Union Temple Baptist Church. 11 a.m. At 11 a.m., Reverend Wilson was on with us a few weeks back, and that church has certainly been an institution in Washington, D.C. So uh, you are invited to come see him, or Minister Farrakhan, tomorrow speak at Union Temple Baptist Church. Minister, this is something that you probably have answered ad nauseum, it is something, I'm going to go back to Mark Potok one more time, in terms of the criticism of the language, of your language, and one of the justifications for the nation being on the, uh, the hate list. And that is that supposedly you called Judaism a gutter religion, and that you said that Hitler was a great man. Uh, you're right, ad nauseum. I'm sick of it and sick of having to address something I've addressed over the years. This is not even worthy of my time, to be very honest. Uh, let me just say very quickly, you know, um, I never referred to Judaism as a gutter or dirty religion. I referred to the practice of some of those who claim to be Jews and their practice is dirty, using God and the prophets as a shield for unclean, unsavory, illegal, and wicked actions. Christians do that. They use Jesus as a shield. Muslims do that. They use Muhammad and the Quran as a shield to carry on illegal, wicked things in the name of God and their prophets. That's the way I approached it. I never said, I did say Hitler was a great man. I did. 
but wickedly great. See, when, when they say what I say, always notice how they position my words. Wickedly, uh, this is not my language, by the way, but I did study it. <laughs> wickedly is an adverb, and great is an adjective. And you can use an adverb to modify an adjective. Now, I didn't make Hitler. You all made him. There's no time in the 40 years since Hitler has been dead that we made a movie on Hitler, that we talked about Hitler. Y'all talk about him. And you all make him come through time with what the Nazis did. And you bring him to us to teach us of the Holocaust that you all suffered at the hands of Adolf Hitler. Well, let me ask you, we have just put out a book called The Secret Relationship Between Blacks and Jews, Book One and Book Two, with over 2,000 footnotes from Jewish rabbis, scholars, and historians. Now, Come on and get the book and tell us if anything we said in the book is false. We need to have the debate that I was referring to earlier because this book was referred to by Mr. Potok as filled with inaccuracies, filled with untruths. See, that's a liar. I'm calling you that, Potok. You are of your father. He was a liar from the beginning. We want to sit down, see, and expose you for the liar that you are or the demon. Let's come on out and let's have the showdown because it's time now that black people should go free from your control. You want them to you. You want to use me as a litmus test before any black man can rise. Let me tell you, there was a young violinist, a great young girl. She's 16 years of age. She was everything that I ever hoped to be. She was studying at the University of Indiana. And she had a tremendous Jewish teacher as her teacher. She and her mother knew nothing about me. But that man, according to the mother, told her, the mother, that if this child ever has anything to do with Louis Farrakhan, she will never get another lesson. Now, that's hate. I have never done any act of hatred towards you all. How did that even come up? How do you mean? I mean... You said it was it was a black girl, yeah, and her and her mother, and they they were being talked by. Well, they came to me, uh, and she played for me. Oh, I see. And I gave her a five thousand dollar scholarship, and I didn't ask for it, but the mother told me that the teacher told them. She didn't even know who I was, but the teacher made me known. Let me tell you something. You're all so frightened of Farrakhan. Not because I'm a murderer, but see, this thing, this truth that's in my mouth is what scares the hell out of you. But it's not my fault. If you were not doing wickedness, the truth couldn't find you. So uh, let's have this thing, man. Let's stop talking about it. And I bet you, if you can arrange it, we'll throw down. But I'll tell you, they ain't going to show up because light. Darkness can't show up with light. It's the end of the argument. I think that I, I would respond to that by saying that um, my mother was 46 years old when I was born. And the doctor told her, no way you could be pregnant. And she said, yes, I am. So I know you talked about your circumstances of birth. I have circumstances of birth of my own that I wasn't supposed to happen. I was a very big mistake. And since the time that I can remember, I've been told by one and all, well, you can't really do that. Whatever the journey might have been, whatever my aspirations and dreams may have been, that is just not going to happen. And you know what? Uh, it didn't stop me from trying, and not everything did happen. 
But in terms of trying to use what resources I have, I certainly will make a very honest and earnest attempt to arrange the dialogue that you're talking about. Um, uh, um, if I'm a betting man in Las, uh, from Las Vegas, do I put high odds on it? No, but my life has been sort of lived against the odds, and I certainly will make that effort. I fervently believe that it is, could be something that would be valuable for our country and valuable for the world. My dear brother, it will be a great learning experience for you in your effort to do this. No, I'm serious. I, I, I don't play with this. I tried this dialogue 30 years ago, and I was invited, listen to this, on the Ted Koppel show to have a showdown with um, the man for the ADL. Foxman. No, it wasn't Foxman. It was his predecessor. But anyway... Nathan Perlmutter, thank you. And I said to them, I said, no, I would not want us to come on television to have a dialogue. I would rather us have the dialogue, and if the dialogue is successful, then we go before the television and say we resolve the problem. Mm -hmm. Now, that's an intelligent approach. But... 30 years have gone on now. So it, it can't be done in no back room. It's got to be done in the public where all the damage has been done to me and the nation of Islam and what we represent. There will not be any back room dialogue. It will be either in the public for the whole world to see. Otherwise, it was not going to be fruitful for us. We got to end this once and for all. And I'm willing to pay with my life if you can find me lying. Uh, Minister Farrakhan.